testing yellow. Hold on, that is input the last one. All right, go for it. Basically, I'm, I'm scanning for free channel on the wireless system to make sure there's no interference. How do you feel about this? I feel great. It's going to be awesome. This is a new type of talk show. It's not a webinar, it's not a talk show. It's next up. And it's going to be live. And that's red is channel. Looks like this one here. So it's going to be negative 18. My name is Marley Gordon. I am the CEO of NextGen Network and one of the three co-hosts for Next Up, which is what you're watching right now. My other two co-hosts include Amanda Venenzia and Brianna Gustafson, who is more than just a co-host. She's actually a moderator, so she is able to interact with our guests virtually in real time and relay messages to our guests that we have on set. So the show's already began. I don't want to take up too much time talking. Let's go ahead, let's dive right in. That question is why people to go there. I know I only have one more second to talk, <laughs> but I just, because I wanted to say, we need to take time to hear people's stories and respect it and understand we all need them for us to continue being leaders out there. So thank you so much for having me here today. Thank you for being here. Hello everyone, I'm Alicia Hall Campbell, Executive Director of the Institute of Child Nutrition, and we are funded by USDA to provide applied research, education and training for child nutrition professionals all across the United States. Uh, my journey into leadership started very early. Um, it was in a rural underserved community in Mississippi, um, very limited resources, and so one of the ones to always have an idea and go to the administrators. Can we do this? Can we plan this? 4-H um, was really big growing up, so was really involved in 4-H and captain of the cheer team and things like that. So really involved in school and community activities and events. So it just kind of became a natural thing for me. Um, went to college at Jackson State University, a degree in biology. Went and did some internships at the National Institutes of Health, realized I didn't want to do research, um, couldn't be in a lab all day. So I went and got an MPH at the University of North Texas Health Science Center, coupled that with my PhD in educational, higher educational leadership. And this opportunity presented itself at the Institute, which was a great combination of all of my skills. And so I have an amazing team, shout out to the Nutrition. Thank you, Next Gen, for this opportunity. Um, but as a leader, um, one of the things I want to see, um, especially in the Institute's role, is how we train the next generation. Um, there's a, a mass exodus of uh, people retiring, um, being overwhelmed. And so as people come into the field, how do we make sure the next generation takes Beverly knowledge and be able to operate those programs with that and so that's what we want to do is continue to train child nutrition professionals. So thank you, Next Gen. We appreciate the opportunity. Now, before Angela goes, do you guys want to see one of Alicia's cheer moves? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, cheer yes, move. Go, go, go. Come on. I think we need an ICM cheer. Yeah. Yeah. I need go. in. Let's go. <laughs> that's a great lead in. I was a cheerleader. I think a lot of cheerleaders get our thing. There you go. All Bring the cheerleaders on, in the house. Yeah. So how um, many cheerleaders? One, two, three, four. 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 Wow. Four. 
Well, I'm Angela Olige, and uh, I am what Alicia was talking about, one of the newly retired. However, I was not overwhelmed. I wasn't burned <laughs> out, but God said Why it was time. Why is she looking at me while she's saying that? <laughs> Are you overwhelmed and burnt out? I'm very tired. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not. But, you know, I do follow uh, an instruction that comes from a higher. I've always said work is unto the Lord mm -hmm. yeah, and, and everything that you do. And so this was my time. To go i started not not so much i don't have nutrition background i'm an accountant and i started with school districts i um, graduated from the university of houston clear lake with a bachelor's in accounting and accounting was my passion and people say that's an oxymoron to have all that kind of personality and love to deal with numbers right but you can sit me somewhere and i will look for that one <laughs> i will look for that one everybody's chagrin uh, but it also helped me as i started in school districts I started at Lamarck ISD, a very small school district, um, went to Houston ISD, and I also worked at Clark County. Mm. And Clark County ISD in Las Vegas, they were one of the fastest growing school districts back at that time, adding 12 schools a year. So you learn how to really be flexible, you learn what you really have to do. And when I came to Texas, uh, my husband is in military, he retired, we came back to Texas, I started with the State Department. It wasn't that I decided to be the assistant commissioner. That wasn't really how it was. I came in as the director of operation in six months. I became the deputy assistant commissioner. And about two years later, I was the assistant commissioner. And there, it was a wonderful experience. I had a wonderful journey, wonderful people. I really had great staffs throughout the 16 years that I was there. But you learn that language and communication is key. You learn that you must collaborate mm -hmm. and you learn that everybody has value and you do not have to. One of my greatest lessons in leadership, and I will say to everyone, don't devalue yourself to value somebody else. Mm -hmm. You have what it takes to be a leader. And the other thing I was telling them back there, Jose and I are holding up the 60 group. <laughs> <laughs> but. The one thing that I found out is that whatever was in me at six is also in me at 60. So find that thing that's in you and build on it. I like it. That's wow. really, yes. that's really good. Yes. Your I, don't, I don't know what we're gonna do for the 30s group. All right, Come on, that's all right, we'll move it, we'll move it. So my name is Richard Miles. I'm so honored to have the opportunity to be here with incredible people that I admire tremendously. We just begun. I'm already taking notes. I think being a lifelong learner is so important. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll even get CEUs or PD points for being here today. I Maybe you guys think you will if you registered for this webinar. <laughs> Absolutely. And someone else that I really admire, um, they've said often from the stage, you may see my glory, but you don't know my story. Ooh. And I think it was really a profound way of saying that you need to know much more about the person than what you see on stage that today and maybe I can even lead into a big part of that because I am not the person that you see here all the time or was in the past. I can transparently say I did not get into leadership initially for some altruistic reason. Yeah. I thought it wasn't cool to be a part of the National Junior Honor Society. I had strategic opportunities that I totally blew in times. Um, but at the same time, with much grace and opportunity, we've had a chance to learn. I grew up in um, Metro Detroit, but I was born in Southern California. Anaheim is the original home of Disney. So all you Floridians, <laughs> Disney World came after Disneyland, okay? Um, and my dad was in medical school at the time. Uh, when he finished up, he went to go do his residency in Detroit. Uh, we had a lot of close aunts and uncles that he appreciated. Um, but shortly after, my mom and dad separated. And after having uh, the privilege of two college educators, I found myself in need of free and reduced meals for the next 13 years. Wow. Where often it was where I got most of my calories for the day. And I can even remember in the summer as things changed that I was happy when I got old enough to walk to Faith United Methodist Church where I could receive meals, fun, and uh, a great time there. And later I found out that that was because of the summer food service program. And United Methodist, that's where I gave my life to Christ. 
And I said that I wanted to be a part of helping other individuals who had some challenging situations like mine. But that wasn't where I went right away. If I can be transparent, the reason that my leadership journey started was because with increasing positions, there was increasing leadership responsibilities, which led to increasing amounts of compensation. I was in a low income family to make as much as I could in the time period that I had during my summers when I can work. And I started working as, as early as I could. But then over time, I understood more about what leadership was. Being a counselor in training, leading small children to a counselor, to a senior counselor, to a, to a local community director, where it was really about making sure that the children were safe, that they were learning something, and they had a great time. So I'm excited to have a great time with you guys today, and hopefully we can share more of this journey. So the two of you, Beverly and Richard, you guys have your leadership stories kind of intertwined a bit. You want to talk a little bit about that, what that experience was like? Yeah, Beverly, tell us what that experience was like. <laughs> <laughs> one of my proudest stories. Okay. okay. Let's, let's hear about um, it. And I, I forgot, to, could I tell, go back for just Please a moment? Do. Yeah. I failed to mention a little bit more of my background as well. I farm in Indiana and we were way outside of town. I was five miles outside of a town of 1000 people. Uh, my mother was an RN, my dad was a farmer and I was one of six children. And like so many of you, my leadership started in church, in 4-H, at school, but all of that. I think that's important to note because when I met Richard, we already had so much in common. We had so much in common apparently, but we had so much in common. Um, Urban young man from Detroit, rural farm. We did not have a lot in common. Okay. Besides <laughs> yeah. yeah. hairstyle, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. We it. had our faith background in common. So I would say that. Um, Richard was a dietetic intern who came to us from Wayne State, right? Uh, we interviewed over the t telephone for the, uh, we always interviewed over the dietetic interns. And Richard was a star intern in our department. Um, he was eager. He raised his hand, as you said, Jose, when it was time to take on a project, he was right there. But another thing he did is he helped bring together the rest of his class in many ways. We had some, we had some personality issues sometimes, as I recall, Richard, and he was a kind of, a, he, he was, he was, he was the calming force oh, okay. and it was, no, he was the calming force and it was magnificent. Um, so was that more organic or did you intentionally try and bring just everybody together is, all the time? That's just who he is as a person. Well, I, I think it was a divine appointment and there was a special story about how I actually came there. So I plan on staying in Detroit. Um, originally I was going to be a medical doctor like my father. I thought that's how I was going to help people. Uh, but my senior year in college, a community nutrition class changed my trajectory. Mm -hmm incredible person, Tonya Reinhardt. She was a co-author on Superfoods. And she really convinced me that by focusing on prevention, we could have a greater impact in our community than trying to cure or heal later. Mm -hmm. And so two weeks before my medical school interview that my dad set up for me, I decided I wasn't gonna do it and I was gonna go to grad school for community nutrition. How did he take yes. that? Uh, it, took, it took a while for him to understand um, that I really was following my heart and my calling. And obviously there was a lot of pressure to kind of exceed what he did. Um, and so it was difficult. It made for quite a few experiences um, where we had to reestablish trust and understanding. Right. But um, I feel it was a blessing I even came back into life anyway, because we were about 10 years apart before we re-engaged when I was in college. Right. And, and that's when our relationship came back. But inside of the internship and being with Beverly, I, I just saw an incredible example. I saw individuals community, even when their community didn't look like them, didn't stay in the same house, didn't have the same background, there was a group of ladies and gentlemen that were committed to making sure that individuals had the opportunity to rise to their best. And I say, you know what, that's one of the things I admire about a leader, someone who has a persistent pursuit of the mission that Absolutely. others want to emulate. I literally just wanted to be like Beverly, <laughs> different clothes, <laughs> different clothes, but I really did. I like her and I saw that there was a tremendous value 
because every decision she made, thousands of children could be bettered. And so could many families of those that are part of the team and part of the community. And I thought that was incredible. Well, I just want to add to that. And I think we saw this uh, at the onset of the pandemic. You know, it was the school nutrition professionals who didn't mm -hmm. go home during the pandemic. The sure. principals, the teachers, the students. But it was the school nutrition professionals who were there that the communities were fed. I mean, mm. that's leadership, yeah. you know, and, you know, in the, at the onset of the pandemic, we didn't really know, you know, we knew about social distancing and all of that, but they were still out there. Yeah. They were unknowns. Yeah, the unknown heroes of the community. And so getting and garnering that respect from the community and the district as a whole, I mean, that's what we want to see. Um, and, you know, to add to that, though, even in addition and the people who were out there on the front lines, it was all throughout child nutrition. And from the national level all the way down, people were working constantly, consistently dealing with flexible regulations, regulations that came too late, regulations that came too often. Uh, you know, there was a lot going on and pulling in industry. I mean, that was a time that we started talking to everybody, everybody. And, everybody. and I wanted to add to what the because it's like I said, there has to be some, you want it to be inspired. Someone mm -hmm. inspired and drove people to say, I want to be present. Yes. And that's yes. what I mean. Remember that we were talking that day, right. like you want to be visible. And how am I going to do this? The, the, the directors of the schools, the managers, they all said, we need help. Who's going yes. to show up? Right. And that's what people were saying. I'm going to show up. I'm going to show up. Next thing to your point, it wasn't just the directors mm -hmm. and school managers and the cafeteria workers, it was also the industry, it right. was the community. Yeah. We wanted to make sure, yeah. to your point, that every kid, and it was just yeah. not about the kids, right. it Everyone. was also about the adults right. because they lost jobs and right. all this stuff is, how are we gonna make sure right. that they have food on the table, yeah. on the school seven days a week? Because it didn't end up to be on a, until no. Friday. No, you need other people to show up again. So when you're talking, your point is, who is inspiring you to say, I can do that, I can do that. Mm -hmm. And through my whole and all of you, I said, I is, there were so many people that pushed me all the way up, all mm -hmm. the way down, all the way to the side, then said, you can do it, you yeah. can do it, get the energy, but never lose that passion, right. Right? never. I like what you said there too, because it brought me to another thought that I had of leaders I admire is, they're also coalition. You mentioned that it wasn't just about the child nutrition team, in our case, the campus restaurant team or the food service team, whatever you may call or consider a team. It was about your team working in collaboration with your community partners. We did a lot with our health department right. because they were first responders to some of the medical needs. What a great team to partner with. They were part of our drive throughs as we fed the community remotely. Uh, we partnered with individuals who are part of our after school programs who were fine educate children who had special needs outside of a outside the standard building um, what an opportunity to partner and then obviously with those who are part of ICN and our state agency for each working in their areas um, to try to bring to the team the best of the resources yeah. we had and I believe that's why we were successful and thousands of community members are still grateful today yeah I think one of the things though when you talk about that at state level a leader period at every level they have to be able to see 360 yeah. they need to know what is the impact going to be if i do this what's going to be the ripple effect down the line and they need to be lifting up you know we listen to child care workers daycare centers adult daycare believe it or not all of that had to be listened to our food banks who played such a huge part in what we were going on and then listening to our industry who was saying shedding the light going hey there's a supply issue there's some Talking about supply issues long before uh, it's all in the Times media now. <laughs> huh? The New York Times article comes yes. out and my business administrator sends this to me and I said, I wanted to shake him and say, I've been saying this since July because, you know, we require that validation, but that actually says, okay, she actually knew what she was talking about. This is actually something that's not only affecting, you know, this small, this small pocket, but nationwide. So you were talking 
questions, just getting on a loudspeaker and asking anyone in the building to come to dining. Does that count as a coalition? <laughs> You're making all these yeah. incredible formal, um, formal relationships. And, you know, we were just trying to get anybody we could to help us get all these meal boxes full, filled and out because we had the food. It wasn't on the shelves in the grocery stores, but we had them in our kitchens. And I mean, who showed up? Everyone who showed up, like, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you to every single individual, whether you showed up uh, by creating supporting documentation. We got, I think ICN was in my inbox the next week. Um, anyone who was there for us uh, spiritually, via email text message yes. text messages mm -hmm. from jose saying keep your head up um you know it was such a community of excellence that allowed the ability to get up the next day and i mean i put my marriage on the line to come to work that day because my husband said we don't know what this is like what happens if you bring this home if it hurts our children if it hurts my mother who lives with us and we had to go bravely into work each and every day. And I don't think a lot of people understand the risk that we took, not only professionally, but personally in our community. So thank you to everyone. Thank you to the incredible work from ICN. Our Department of Education was always there for us. Uh, commodities for opening up the doors when we came knocking. Um, it was just such a, a we, we, it was like a national coalition. I mean, Absolutely. We were all together. But I think one of the important parts about leadership is we built the relationships long before the need arose. Absolutely. And Beverly and I knew each other for almost 14 years, Beverly. Wow, um, so when I had someone that intimately knew me, knew what our mission was, knew what we were trying to accomplish, so they could help advise us and, and show a different angle that I didn't see or a place I hadn't walked yet. Mm -hmm. um, there's incredible opportunity. I think because of groups that are together like we are right now mm -hmm. um, to share and spread this with others. Mm -hmm. If you don't have someone that you've connected with, if you don't have a mentor, I strongly encourage you okay. to make sure that you develop relationships with other people that have your same. And as we talk more about leadership, I'm absolutely certain that you'll see and hear about characteristics that came into being, not because we invented them, but because we saw them modeled by someone else before us. And I love what you just said, because you just said, like, get somebody to be your mentor. And immediately in my, in my brain, I start going to talk again about the diversity and the inclusion. And, and when we're talking about diversity, we're also talking about personalities that we all know. And we're talking about what just happened during the pandemic. And I'm sure we all have identified leaders that actually step up. So how we as leaders need to say, how am I going to take these people, make sure they are inclusive in our group, make sure that we said, yes, diversity is so important because at that point, mm -hmm. we needed to understand Absolutely. you and you and me. And, and, but it's going to be our duty to make sure they're prepared yeah. for what's coming next. And I'm not talking about a pandemic but just to lead the new generation because some people like Angela that is retired, that's why she's smiling. <laughs> and you, you know what I mean? One day we'll get there, but it's our duty to really, how are we gonna do it to make strong leaders to continue what you just said, the goal. Like I said, yeah. I call it the yeah. goal, but you're talking to a Puerto Rican, yeah. but it's the same word. <laughs> yeah. oh. You know, but I smiled all the way through anyway, because that's what leaders need to do. I needed to be able to show we can do this. Yes. We can make this. We were on the calls, having statewide calls in Texas, talking to everybody. You're absolutely right. We built on the relationships we already had. We made new relationships. Mm -hmm. And I think the key thing was in leadership is consistency. That was the thing that I heard so much when I went and, and on my tour to retire. That was the thing that I heard from the state more than anything. Thank you for being consistent. Thank you for being there. Thank you for listening. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for your passion. But thank you for bringing us back together. I knew when I was going to quit. One lady told me she was going to just quit. She had just had so much during the pandemic. 
hear me on that Wednesday call and go, I can do it. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing for leadership is that we have to look and see what's in people that they don't necessarily see. All of us had something that we didn't see. Somebody else identified it and put us through the paces you know, and brought it out. We can do right now. I think you and I can as, yeah. as retirees, as recent retirees, and I do this. I call directors yeah. and just check in. Mm -hmm. Known for, for years and just recently went to the Florida School Nutrition Association meeting and reconnected with people after not seeing them for two years. That was so important just to be there and to make that Connection. human connection yes. again. Let's just take a second and just check in with Bree. Who do we have around here? There's some <laughs> polls going on. Everybody. So when Jose was talking, the crowd went wild. <laughs> <laughs> one, one thing somebody is because I was working in a district at the time is Thank you for providing those cooking directions for home kitchens when we were all serving curbside meals. In English uh, and Spanish. Yes. <laughs> I remember printing them, printing them out, putting them in the bags. That was such a great thing for you all to do. People loved that. Um, we have directors watching. We have people who don't even work in school districts watching. We have uh, menu planners. We have state level executives. So a little bit of everything. Poll, and I asked, when you're putting a team together, what are some of the leadership qualities that you feel are most important? Right now, the leader is passionate, mm -hmm. strategic, organized, and a motivator. Passionate. Yeah. yeah. You know, everything we do has yes. a stem from your passion. People will see that. And you don't necessarily have to go, hey, I'm the leader in any of that. Because we have people who are leaders who don't wear titles, right? right? there and because of their passion and because of their consistency and them doing it all the time people look up to them and Inspiring. look to them yeah mm -hmm. so passion passion is definitely key in anything in a marriage <laughs> in church <laughs> in, in church in everything so I, think, I, I, think, I think another one possibly to add is that it's okay for people to see you not at the top of your game yes days where it's stressful yeah. and there are days when you think to yourself could i do this one more day yeah. and make this happen i mean usually that happened to us when we would activate hurricane shelters <laughs> to be quite candid you know can we make this happen for our community and the answer is with everyone coming together we can yeah. but you know i've had people see me sad yes about what's Absolutely. happening and so forth and i think that's okay because yeah. we're not always perfect and on top yeah. of our game. And that's part of the leadership journey as well. Transparency. We have to accept that, you know, mm -hmm. it's okay to fail. That's yeah. kind of mm -hmm. how you learn and how some of the most ingenious ideas come out uh, from failure, taking that risk, mm -hmm. but it's learning from those mistakes mm -hmm. and not making those same mistakes again. Mm -hmm. um, I use the definition of leadership as an individual who inspires others towards, towards a common goal. Mm -hmm. And so whatever that goal is, you know, you're garnering that Leader, yeah. you want to cheer people on, but you also want to coach them. Yeah. And so you also need to forecast or we have our team meetings every Tuesday and I tell the staff, hey, um, I don't need you to agree with everything that we say. I need you to give me your perspective. You're hired mm -hmm. for a reason. Bring your skill set to the table. Yes. Play devil's advocate. How is this decision going to impact others? We need all of the thoughts on the table. So when we make a decision, we can make an informed decision. Absolutely people i don't want mm -hmm. i don't want to hire yes people i want people who are going to tell me this is the impact Absolutely. of this decision so when we make that decision we've anticipated right. what that outcome you know, be. oftentimes mm -hmm. alicia i used to tell people you were hired when you sit in that interview there was something that the interviewer saw in you that's what you bring to the table the only thing that gets me more upset is i see something in somebody and then they start to work and that very thing that you hired them for they or they don't give. You say, we can teach you child nutrition, right? There are some, a lot of things we can teach you, but the thing that you bring, nobody can teach nobody. you that. You bring that and that's what makes the whole team well. And just like you talked about, transparency is the key. We've had some really difficult times this year, right? Yes. Over the past couple of years. there And not just in child nutrition. And that's the other thing that I always used to make sure people understood. We're not carbon 
We're not just in child nutrition. We're not just managers or, or people who are serving on the line or people working in an office. That's not where we are. We live in this environment and everything that hits this environment impacts the people who work for you. So a leader really be, be transparent. I've cried on statewide calls, on calls with my whole state uh, of employees because it hurt. But then you bring them back and go, but this is how we do it. And when they see you being transparent, they, when they see you being vulnerable, then they are inspired mm -hmm. and they want to do more. Can we talk about getting angry for a second? Oh, and uh -oh. see, I'm just, I'm just not a good just little farm that. girl. <laughs> like Dr. Gerard, um, I have to, I'll make a tiny confession and say, but there might be some swear words that occur in my office at oh, yeah. some time. Jose, it's true. Um, Boston, but the F bomb does get thrown. And I'll tell you what, I think that it's, I think that it's a testament to the passion that we have for getting angry on behalf of our staff when they're mistreated or when someone doesn't communicate for them, like exuding that passion in yes. all the different ways, yes. because it is so important that they know that we're behind them. You know, I say to them, you make food, I solve problems. Um, and for them to know we're behind, I'm behind you. Mm -hmm. And like, that wasn't okay. And I'm going to take care of that. That is appropriate mm -hmm. and it's acceptable. And it probably happens to all of us where we're in some situation that you're angry. I mean, never with this nice lady, right? I mean, it's hard to be mad. Oh, <laughs> actually, actually, let's be honest. Oh, <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. There's a story let's here. Go. Not with Richard because he was, you know, awesome, but get angry at work. Yeah, yes, we do it. get angry at work. Yes, we get angry at situations or we get angry with things that happen, like you said, to our staff and you wanna run interference and something happens that you can't run the appropriate interference, but you're absolutely correct that, Amanda, that shows our passion and that we're not giving up. And to be candid, you know, as you said, Angela, sometimes we hire people and we see their potential or we promote people and we see their potential. All of a sudden, it doesn't work. It doesn't, it doesn't work. work. You know, so what do you do as a leader then? Well, you make decisions. Important. It's also important, though, as a leader, you don't want to make a decision when you're emotional. Correct. You yes. don't want to make emotional yes. decisions. Yes. So yes. you have to step away or when you're at that point, not to have that conversation at that time. Step away. This is not the time to have that conversation. Go step away. I'm going to come back and talk to you, Beverly, tomorrow mm -hmm. or in two days, because you don't want to end up regret yeah. and things like that so it's really important to to have that emotional response but not make those decisions right. at that time well that's right. the thing you, you, we, we we're people we're humans. Yeah. we feel right yeah. feelings are there so you feel it's not the feeling that's the problem it's what you do with the feeling right. and that's, that's what the I problem to add to you because when well people know me you know i'm very low-key yes. <laughs> as you know <laughs> all right so yeah I'm said many many times and you get very passionate but to your point is what you do after mm -hmm. you need to know there are times that you have to say sorry and you have to say apologize and you have to be transparent on that apology and you're they need to know you are correct and to your point yeah you're cursing and all that but it's that inner circle that everyone is doing that you're not like on a leader going back to that question beside passionate you you know how much we love that they're passionate but it's respect yes i always key. said a key factor in a leader is respect you need to respect every person and okay. i will say after the fourth time we did not receive our french toe sticks i went and ordered more and then we got them so but it took I it takes it <sighs> My gosh, four times they tried to order those French toast sticks. Well, you're lucky that you got them. In many other schools, they haven't got them yet. And well, we are in the there's 500 <laughs> cases <laughs> coming in on Sunday. No, that's so. a whole different <laughs> problem. That's another webinar. Yeah, that's another <laughs> webinar. <laughs> but, you, but you know, even in that, and in, in only your feelings, because there are a lot of people who sometimes get angry and that anger just spews, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Or they get irritated and the mm -hmm. irritation spews. Are the frustrated and the frustration spews. That's not okay. All right. Mm -hmm. it, it's not when we talk about professionalism and people are looking up to you, those things can happen. 
we can feel it, but what do we do? How do we manage ourselves mm -hmm. so that that doesn't become something I'm consistently having to go, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm no, sorry. Yeah, no, you know, no. so we have to do that a little bit. I mean, that's, I mean, from, I don't know, years on, people know, I think it's gonna be on my tombstone. Here lies a professional person who wants to be professional at all times. <laughs> I, I miss the mark sometimes, definitely. Uh, but I think so much in this society, common courtesy, mm -hmm. civility, compromise, compromise. collaboration, yeah. communication. Compromise. We have lost so much that it's the leader's job to bring it back, to so instill a, that. I have a question. Earlier, you mentioned um, like interviewing people that have potential, but mm -hmm. they may not see that potential mm -hmm. in themselves. Yeah. How do you how do you help shine a light on that potential? Because personally struggled with for quite some time. And whenever I first got started with my entrepreneurship journey, I had to talk to Bev and she had, she saw all this potential in me that I quite frankly didn't see. And it's not because I'm an insecure person. I'm, a, I'm pretty secure, <laughs> but I just didn't see the potential that others saw in me. So as Absolutely. leaders, how do you bring out that potential or shine the light on it? Sometimes you have to wait. Mm -hmm. I will be honest. Sometimes yeah. you really have to wait. Number one, you have to know the person really yes. well. And I known you really well um coming up through pasco county and so forth and, pasco. Yeah. <laughs> there you go um but you ha you have to give them time too yeah. so i think it's important to know the person but to give them time to figure it out where they excel when i talk about uh, richard and some of the interns we had we had interns and our our intern class would go all the way from july to may the end of july to may and sometimes they wouldn't find out what they wanted to do until about march they found out what they wanted to do they were on a trajectory wow. and created in some cases brand new jobs for themselves yeah. so that and one that i can think of that off the top of my head all face food bank in sarasota had never had a dietitian but she went and did part of her rotation at the food bank and convinced the executive director and everyone else and me that she should be the dietitian at the food yeah. bank so it was it's just waiting for people to kind of figure out who they to know them you have to and I, could i just say one more thing about that too marlon i think that leaders need not a mentor but they need someone to talk to oh, yeah. you know because you just you need to someone to talk to <laughs> because it gets crazy yes it gets crazy, yes. crazy. Yes. so yes. sometimes maybe just closing the door i was fortunate to have my husband to talk yeah. to or yeah. or someone just trying to figure out which step to take Absolutely. next but back we have to know each other first well you have to also celebrate small wins yes, yes. um you know kudos great job so people do want to feel validated yes. and so you want to give them that that pat on the back when when it's yeah. just a little small thing and that just builds the confidence to move forward and continue Absolutely. that that journey Good question. I can this is it. something i always struggle with is saying good job or great mm -hmm. job or kudos mm -hmm. but then someone what about me? Yeah. So how do I, how do I, how do we deal with the, what I call the what about me syndrome? I think it's a good, good place to go for a leader because you want to set up your team for success to have those wins. So inside of each one of our campus restaurants, shout out to the Red Apple Dining team, because I know we've been hitting goals all year long, serving more guests than ever before. When you have a team win that you can all get behind, it mm. makes it extraordinarily synergistic. Yeah, uh, it's that. important to have individual we're a diverse group. We each bring something different to the table. Our IT support is bringing something different to the table than our purchasing buyers, right. different to the table than our culinarians, different to the table than some of our other administrators, right? Yeah. Everyone's bringing something different to the table, but as a leader, we can still set up the common win, which hopefully should be rooted in our mission yeah. and cast in our vision. Yeah. And I'm excited yeah. to say that we've had a winning team for years yeah. now um, that we can all celebrate together. I think also you can, if you set out objectives that are clear, you can identify individual wins too. Yeah. Uh, we worked at doing that and identifying what that looks like, coming up with a way that we can give the kudos. The staff is probably still working on that at TDA, um, but Texas Department of Agriculture, right. let me say that instead of saying TDA, yeah, TDA. nobody okay. knows what that is. It's not like a transportation. <laughs> <laughs> Texas Truck Department of Agriculture, shout out to all of them, still doing a great, great job. But I think if you, 
and you're clear up front, then I can say, great job, Beverly, because you did such and such and such. And everybody knows what took to get that great job, what it took. And I think if, if I can go back, Marlon, I wanted to say about your question, because so many times those of us who do know ourselves, I mean, we're all sitting here, mm -hmm. right? It, I still have someone who speaks into me. Mm -hmm. I still have someone who says, I see this in you that I don't see. Sometimes it's so easy for me to see you. It's so difficult to, for me to see me. And when I see me through somebody else's eyes, whether that's good or bad, that allows me to be able to do something about that. And so uh, as a state director, you know, we had no organization. There was nothing just for state directors. And it's crazy town sometimes um, being in the middle, having to uh, manage USDA's expectations and manage your state's and it's everybody else's in the state's expectations. And so what we did was uh, we brought together all the state directors to come together. We had a session, we had a couch session. We got together, we vented uh, for a few minutes and then we came up with common problems and then we came up with solutions to take that to USDA. And that allowed a lot of state directors <clears throat> to have input and to have impact. And you probably have seen some of the results of that. A little bit to that question, Amanda. Please. Yeah. <laughs> the reason is because I know that we're all from different organizations, but I wanted to give a perspective as a person in the sales, you know, in the processing side in the world that people are looking at you and Beverly and me were talking about it and something that you said that you make it look so easy. But I've been, and, and yeah, it looks easy because I've been doing it for 27 years or 35 years. I just can say, I forgot to say that. I, University of Florida. I have a bachelor's degree in humans, no, with food science and human nutrition. I started as a food microbiologist. Can you believe that? I was, I know I just changed, but I had it to add. Can you believe being seven years inside a lab counting no. bacteria and I couldn't see humans? <laughs> yeah, that was seven. But those seven years helped me to say this role is ending. I need to get out. But I wanted to answer your question instantly to work for a company, you know, JTM Food Group, but everything is about the whole team. So it's a group goal. And you just said it about the expectations. Mm -hmm. So yes, you have a star, you have two stars, but you know what, when you think someone is truly the effort as yeah. a leader to say, thank you to the whole team. So when you have sales teams, it's always great when companies form that team building, that mm -hmm. teamwork. And you know, if you need some help, to, you know, to get to that and you, and you build great leaders in the sales on the, within the same team, just making like a movie. You have the director, you are the directors, you know, the oh, they are the directors. <laughs> They're the one making us great. Yes, 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 yes. That you're making us look so young in the camera. One thing I want to say, you can't put a period at the end of leadership. I mean, no, no. that's it's, a great it's a point. ever evolving yeah. journey. Um, so while we when things great. Um, someone said a quote, and I hope I can get it right. Um, you rot when you're brown. That means when you're comfortable, you're rotting because you're not growing. You grow when you're green. So when you have those challenges, we have to embrace those challenges because it forces us to grow outside of our comfort level. And so I, I have to check myself sometimes. I'm like, oh, this is so, okay, you're growing, Alicia. You're okay, growing. we're growing. We're, we're getting out of here. We're growing. Um, but that's what you want to this test. Yeah. When I'm comfortable, I'm not being challenged. Mm -hmm. And so what's the next challenge? That what do we need to do? Point. I see and what's our next project when I feel like I'm getting at that point. So yeah, really I think right giving yourself grace. <laughs> <laughs> Leaders need to give themselves grace. I don't know about, I think we've got a lot of um, a personality types sitting here, here, right? Yeah, yeah here, right here, right. right here on this stage. You mean and, the, the so you're always pressing, yeah. right? <laughs> Alicia just said, you're always pressing for the next thing. Know, you're yeah. looking for the next was always what's next what's next i never stopped right. and celebrated my wins and and you know you talked about your family will let you know who you are oh, yeah. long before anybody else does yeah, right sure. and and i was always on to the next thing always what's next what's next and my daughter said mom you never stop and celebrate the win mm -hmm. and you always give more grace to everybody else than you do yourself mm -hmm. and i think that's a lesson that we have to learn ourselves
through grace as well. The grace is for mm -hmm. everybody, not just others. So and pressing forward all the time, I was wanting to be innovative and do new yeah. things like like me. I'm always like, well, what's yeah. next? And Amanda can attest to that. And that's caused some conflict with us. Mm -hmm. So how do you handle conflict with other leaders that are your peers? Wow. Well, that has been a, a journey that I've had to take, right? Because being the assistant commissioner, is, I thought it was my job, and it was, mm -hmm. to vision. Vision for the state agency. But I was visioning for school district. I was visioning for USDA. Even I was visioning for everybody. And so you do have some people going, can you slow down? You're going too fast. Can you stop? Let us do this. And it depends on what's going. It's an it depends answer because it depends on what's happening. What's happening in the environment? Can the environment stand a slowdown? If the environment can't stand a slowdown, I can't slow down. And I've got to build up my team so that they have the staff with me. And I can have that conversation with that one person who might be a little bit more reticent. Go, what's the problem? What's the challenge? Do you see something that I don't see? it's always important to listen to those voices so that you don't feel like, they don't feel like they're being run over, right? But you do still have to let the train leave the station. Mm -hmm. It might, the train does. From a director's standpoint, I think about what's going on in a school district. Be the people that you might have a conflict with, mm -hmm. any other division director right. you know is it facility services facility is it transportation services. is it purchasing <laughs> is it any one of those any one of those what i found out is the more i got to know them right. and they got to know me right. and we had meetings or maybe we had lunch right. or mm -hmm. we just explained what our issues were the better we started getting along mm -hmm. um and you know i um, with Danielle, we had the leadership course with ICN. And one of the things we talked about was the more we know each other and the more we can uh, relate, the better off. Here's, here's a thought. We used to get all of those people to come during National School Lunch Week and be guest servers. And we would get the directors of all the different departments. We would get principals and so forth. And it seems so basic and so simple, but once they stepped into that kitchen, people work, they would sit there and go, Beverly, do you have any idea how hard the people work in your department? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, they're there for an hour. But all of this is when they start understanding what we're up against, they give you grace. Well, you know, the other thing that I saw too, in talking to peers, uh, whether it's in a, because I was at school districts, yes. when you're talking to principals who have a whole different bevy of issues and concerns, or superintendents, boards or any of that the thing is communication is key and don't go in with your lingo mm. don't go in this is the thing i used to tell them all the time don't go talk to a business manager using nutrition lingo they are concerned about finances go and talk to them about financial impact of nutrition yeah. right so you've got to understand what is it that is their major concern and as a communicator motivator and inspirer use the language you have to be clear as a uh, being in a political state and my job was a political position you had to know which words would drive someone to a conclusion that you didn't weren't even presenting you know for instance i had to stop using the word free when you talked about our meals and say meals at no cost because free would drive someone's i we're not talking ideology. We're talking about a process and putting a meal out to someone who needs it. So you have to be clear that you don't use trigger words and you use the right language to talk to the person you're trying to get something from. So knowing your audience, right? you have knowing to. who you're going to you talk have to, to, how it's going to benefit them. You have to. She said, <laughs> what have you found has been um, an effective communication tool or way to communicate? So we we put up a poll. The answers are text, phone, email, or in person. What have you found? I'm going to add a successful? one that's not on there, and I'm going to say respect, because I feel like if you can communicate with respect, you can say anything. Yeah, and that's what's important. So while the method is not there, I think the the the, the heart behind yeah, it is respect, which cannot be done via text message. 
Well, it's I, possible. I, I, it's possible. Say, With the appropriate emojis and punctuation. <laughs> I can't tell you how many emails I wrote. The first ones when it goes back to your anger, because uh, I could write a, a really nice email, but uh, it has been edited many, many times. Yeah thinking about what the other person is going, is to, going hear. to hear right. and going to perceive. So I think it, the answer to your question is it depends because it depends to communicate and what you're trying to convey. When we were in the middle of this epidemic, this pandemic, we couldn't bring everybody face to face. And so you had to come up with things that you could get information out quick. And I think just to add to your respect at care, as you know, the old adage, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And that can come through in emails, letters, everything, if it's genuine. If it's genuine. Way, way to communicate. Yeah. One thing I've heard a few times from leaders here that, that I think about and admire is you've taken the time to get to know someone else's story. Yeah. Uh, so often we hear about leader stories in their books, uh, on television and so forth. But most of the time they got there because they were great listeners to someone else's story. I had individuals that were part of my team that were uh, of two different career standings. I had uh, the earliest career person that was one of my individuals on the team and career people that was part of the same team. They wanted, based on their story and based on getting to know them, they wanted two different approaches of support. One person wanted me to stop by, physically knock and be there. Yeah. Another person just wanted me to answer my text message in 3.5 seconds, yeah. Quick. Yeah. right? So I had very different individuals who wanted me to support in different ways. Uh -huh. And so I think one of the ways we can pay respect and care and actually help individuals with coaching and training is by getting to know their story, communication. And, and I think they, they can take us a long way. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was just having this conversation the other day, you know, you communicating multi-step directions in the auditory form isn't working with this individual. Mm -hmm. Let's move to something else. Let's. So we're actually writing a written plan right now because I don't know about you guys, but I'm a visual person. I need to see it all right now. And but the vision of all of you guys right now, right here, is just incredible. And just, I, I mean, I feel like we could be talking for another two or three hours. Yeah. But we but only, we have, only two minutes. have two minutes. <laughs> yeah, two minutes. <laughs> please. What can I just. Wait, don't go. He can't go first. Uh, Dr. <laughs> Gerard, please. <laughs> I, I think I'll pass and come back. Is that okay? That's fine. Is I'm that sorry, okay? How about you? Leaders that I admire and have learned so much from, they do two things they build relationships and invest in. And I think we're better together, and that's how we stay together and stay on point for our mission. Okay, I'll come back to me now, then, if you don't mind. <laughs> Richard and everyone here, I think that one of the things we talked about a little earlier is that when you are a leader, you don't want, you don't need for the attention to come back to you. You're so happy in seeing the results that occur with those you have been able to lead. And will be my legacy forever um, is we'll be watching the people who who we have been able to mentor and love on to be Thank candid. Beverly. <laughs> <laughs> I promise it will be 30 seconds. <laughs> Two seconds. I will. Oh, my God. It will be service. The leaders is this is all about them. It's not yeah. about you. And please, we need to keep the passion going. Yeah. You see, 20 seconds. Uh, for me and I see in leadership and making sure that we have resources and services for the customer while putting the people first. And how can people find those resources from ICN? www.bicn.org. <laughs> or if you call the phone number at the bottom of the website, a real person. A real person. <laughs> you don't have to hit a prompt. Does that still happen? Wow, that's crazy. I, I think for me, uh, leadership really is about mostly what everyone has said here. Leadership is about seeing others and valuing both equally and just helping each other move out into something more than you could ever be alone. Together, we are greater than anything we could do by ourselves. Some powerful stuff. Well, everybody, you've been watching Real Leaders on a Real Talk Show. This is Next Up Live. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you guys next time. Yeah, oh thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.